School of Us took a lot of abuse during the filming of that little uh, opening segment. Uh, well, anyway, so hello. Thank you for watching. Uh, what we're going to do today, I'm going to recap the uh, virtual field trip that we took together on Zoom. So because it, I called it a field trip anyway, that's why I'm going with this whole Magic School Bus theme for those of you that have seen that show. Uh, so we're going to go on a virtual field trip inside the cell. For today, uh, you can call me Mr. Frizzle. If you uh, watch the Magic School Bus, you should be laughing right now. Um, I think it's pretty fitting. We all probably have pretty frizzly hair after uh, living in, through a pandemic for three months. None of us have had haircuts. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'm wearing a hat. So uh, just to let you know, this is gonna be the last Sec One Science video. Uh, you can use this to help you answer the questions in the uh, virtual test that I'm sending out this week. So this is gonna be the last thing you have to do for science for this year. Um, if it goes too quickly, you know what to do. Just pause it. If I'll explain all the different functions of each component of the cell, and I'll show you where they are as well. And I'll offer you something a little bit different at the end of this video. Stay tuned. So uh, as I said when we did this on Zoom, I'm calling this everything that you need to know about cells or factories because we noticed that cells and factories are actually very, very similar. So here is a factory, a Volkswagen factory. And here are what two cells look like. Now, if you look at them under a microscope, they're not going to look as colorful as this. Next week, I'll actually show you what they look like under a microscope. But um, we can see all these different parts in this nice little image. And I'm going to show you the different parts in this little video. So just to let you know, there are two types of cells that we're going to think about. These green ones are plant cells. These ones are animal cells. And before I even show you any parts, I want you to notice that the plant cell has a more rectangular shape. And they kind of stack on top of each other like bricks. Whereas this animal cell, um, even though it's a nice circle here, in real life it could take on a whole bunch of different shapes. It could probably be all squished together as well. So these are nice and rectangular. This, not really a defined shape. Okay, so let's walk up to this factory. The first thing that I notice is that it's got a wall all around it. Now, you know what walls do, but for one thing, they're gonna offer structural support. They're literally what holds the building up. In a cell, more specifically in a plant cell, there's something similar. That rectangular shape that I talked about a moment ago comes from this thick green membrane here, or I shouldn't say membrane, sorry. This thick green layer on the outside, whoops, it's called the cell wall, and it gives the plant cell its structural support. It's what keep, gives it that rectangular shape. So let's actually keep going on our tour. Uh, let's go inside the factory or cell right now. And when we get here, I'm going to notice that there's a security checkpoint. So what this would do in a factory or airport or any place with security is it would stop you from just walking right in. Um, so they probably wouldn't let me and my... Uh, whole gang of virtual students just walk right in. They'd probably want to ask us a few questions first. They're making sure it's only employees. In a cell, it's kind of the same idea as having tight security. Who can, control, who can enter and who can leave? In a cell, not just anything can come in the cell. So there's a membrane here that runs along the outside, this thin little layer. It's not a cell wall. Don't get it confused. But this little thin layer is called a cell membrane and it controls what can come in. Oxygen and water and things like that can come in. Uh, much, much bigger molecules or structures are not gonna be able to get in. You probably heard about this um, regarding COVID-19. One of the uh, problems with the coronavirus is that it can get in. We don't want it in your cells, but it fights its way in. Moving on, on our tour, one of the most exciting rooms uh, in the factory on our tour uh, I'm just kidding. This is a big empty room filled with air. So nothing but air. So why would I take you to a big empty room? Well, it's to prove a point. It's that I don't see much empty space inside this cell. But is the cell filled with air is my question. And on Zoom, we said, no, it isn't. It's actually filled with this jelly-like liquid called cytoplasm. If it were filled with air, all these organelles, organelles, by the way, are just components of a cell. All of these organelles would probably fall to the bottom of the cell. Instead, they're all kind of stuck there in this jelly-like fluid. 
let's keep going on our tour to probably one of the most important parts of the tour, the office, the main office of the factory. So here I see all the activity out on the floor of the factory, but here is the big office where all the big decisions are made. Kind of like at school. I've already made this joke that the most important rule of room, sorry, at school is my classroom, but in reality, no, it's the main office. That's where all the big decisions about what goes on at Centennial are made. So um, it controls everything. We call it the control center. Well, your cell has its own main office or control center, and it's the nucleus of the cell, this big core right in the middle. They're in both plant and animal cells, and they are what we call the control center. Okay, let's go further into the nucleus. There's something else important that's going on here. And what I'm gonna show you is this little picture. This is what we call a blueprint. Now, if you have a building that's gonna expand, like maybe add more rooms to it, you don't just go and build them. You need to lay out a plan of what the building's gonna look like. And it's a very exact plan, meaning it was not drawn by me. Some of you have laughed at my not so good whiteboard drawing attempts in the past. So it's probably drawn very, very carefully with computers and uh, anyways, it's called a blueprint. So blueprints are plans for, I'm gonna say, future expansion. How are we gonna add on to the office? How are we gonna add on? It's all right here. The information, the code is all in this blueprint. Well, in a cell, we've got something similar. Uh, we've got these little X-shaped bundles of DNA. I know you've heard of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. They're all bundled together into these X shapes, and we have 23 pairs of these inside the nucleus. And what DNA does is, well, DNA you've heard of, but it's got tons and tons and tons of information on everything that makes up you. And they're all bundled, as I said, into these chromosomes. So they have the information on the cell, on actually the entire organism. So, uh, like I said, you have 23 of these. And by the way, these control, first of all, you probably heard of chromosomes maybe from, they decide whether you're a boy or a girl when you're born. So there they are. Moving along on our tour, uh, another very exciting stop on the tour where I point out garbage bags and water bottles. Why would I bother to show you garbage bags and water bottles? You know what they do. They hold garbage and water, respectively. Well, in a cell, there's a big reservoir where we can store things as well. So here it is in a plant cell. It's pretty big. And in fact, it could even be bigger than what you see here. This is called a vacuole. Just think of it as a storage area. Like I'm saying, we can store water in these bottles or garbage in these garbage bags. We can store it in the vacuole. So there are vacuoles in animal cells, but they're not as big as what you see here. Almost done, we're continuing on our factory. Here is the famous Twinkie assembly line. These are these little uh, cake-like things being moved down from one point in the factory to another. So here somebody is making, well a machine is making them I guess, but it's being moved down to somewhere else in the factory. Well your cell has something like that with a big conveyor belt. Another example by the way that we talked about for conveyor belts is think of if you go to the airport and you take your luggage when you get to the airport, you hand it off to somebody, they put it on a conveyor belt and it disappears behind a curtain and it follows this big maze of conveyor belts all the way to the runway where it gets put on your airplane. So cells have something a little bit like that. It's this big bendy thing next to the nucleus. It's called the endoplasmic reticulum. And here is where we build little tiny proteins and we move them to other parts in the cell, just like how we're moving these Twinkies to other parts of the factory. Somehow our factory has gone from manufacturing Volkswagens to Twinkies. Go figure. Now, probably the most important stop on the tour. Here is the furnace room where this person is uh, shoving in a bunch of coal and burning it. And the reason they're doing this is because this is what's going to give energy. When we burn coal, we get a lot of energy. But the reason we're doing this is so that the electricity and everything in the factory will work. We always need a source of energy. Your house has a source of energy. Maybe it's uh, electric heating, maybe it's geothermal heating, maybe it's solar electricity. Um, but a furnace will burn fuel to give us energy. So does that mean that your cells are burning fuel? Are there little fires going on inside your cells? 
well, no, there's no fire going on, but it's the same chemical reaction. We are combusting a fuel inside your cell. And where it all happens is here in these little blue things called the mitochondria. We burn sugar, again, burn, don't think of it as fire, but we combust it, same chemical reaction with oxygen, and it gives us energy, it gives us a lot of energy as well. So if you eat a lot of sugar, some of you have identified to me that you do, you will feel pretty hyper. But just fun fact, you don't even have to eat things that are sweet for this to work. Sugar, more specifically glucose, which is a very, very similar idea. Glucose is found in all kinds of foods. So this reaction is happening all the time. You don't have to eat candy to make it work. And by the way, one more thing, the mitochondria is often nicknamed the powerhouse of the cell or the furnace of the cell. Don't forget that. Moving on in the factory. Now, I don't really know how many factories have greenhouses, but hey, why not? So here's a greenhouse where plants are growing. And plants you've probably heard of grow by a process called photosynthesis. What that means is that they are taking carbon dioxide. They are also taking water. This is why you have to water your plants. And they're taking sunlight, which is why you have to keep plants in the sun. And they're mixing them all together and they're making oxygen that they give off and we breathe in and that makes us happy. But it also makes them glucose, that sugar molecule that I just talked about a moment ago. So this is how plants feed themselves, if you want to go that way. So this all happens in this little green chamber here. This is called a, the chloroplast, and it's only in plant cells. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts. If we had chloroplasts, you could go lie out in the sun and um, make your own sugar inside your body. But we don't have this, so we can't do that. That's why we have to eat food to get our energy. Anyway, all of this happens in the chloroplasts in a liquid called chlorophyll. If you've ever fallen on grass and gotten grass stains, that's what chlorophyll is. And again, only in the plant cell. And so my friends, that brings us to the end of our cell tour. Just to show you all the different parts of the cell one more time, this is the outer membrane here, the cell membrane, the nucleus, the big core in the middle, a vacuole, which I'm just gonna point out is much, much smaller in animal cells, the endoplasmic reticulum, that big assembly line, the chromosome, which is that X-shaped bundle of DNA, the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And this arrow is pointing to nothing in particular. I'm trying to point out the cytoplasm, that fluid that holds everything up. As for the plant cell, we've got the cell wall over here, the big uh, outer thick layer, layer, let's say, that gives the cell its shape. The chloroplast, I've put these two in green, by the way, because they are only in plant cells. Animal cells do not have cell walls, nor do they have chloroplasts. So moving on, plant cells have a mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, the nucleus, which is the control center, chromosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, cell membrane, the vacuole, which I'm going to point out again is much larger in plant cells, and finally, the cytoplasm, this big fluid that holds everything up. And with that, we have officially come to the end of Sec 1 Science. Congratulations. But before we go, just a couple of reminders. Number one, make sure that all your work is sent in to me by June 23rd. So what you should have left is the online take-home virtual test that we're calling it through the website that you can do this week. Please make sure that I have it by June 23rd. I cannot accept any work after this day. One of, it'll be mostly about cells, by the way, so feel free to use this video to help you. One other thing as well, remember these, the five kingdoms. We talked about this a while back. Animalia, plantae, fungi, protista, and monera all living things we can sort into that category. There's a couple of questions in the, uh, in the virtual test, as we're calling it, about these five kingdoms as well. So just a very, very, very quick review about that. Um, let me give you an example. Here is a picture of my dog. I'm not gonna go through the kingdom phylum class order. I'm not gonna give you all of those. Let's just point out that kingdom is animalia. In English, we would just call this a dog. And this is the Latin name. Remember, the Latin name is the genus and the species. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you a few more examples of different living things with their genus and species and their kingdom identified. You can use these to help you answer the questions. And because this is the last video that I'm going to be showing you, I figured I should try to make it a little bit more fun. So uh, let's see. I Well, how else would I do this? I found all the bad animal, plant, and living thing jokes on the internet that I could, and I threw them into a little montage here. So one other thing, the song that's playing, if you don't understand it, that's okay. I don't fully understand it either. It's pretty high level and pretty high pitched, but it was a song about taxonomy. So I had to put it in. Enjoy. <laughs> Animalia, 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 animalia. Oh. 